All right. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Right on time. <laughs> yeah, we uh. Good excuses though. We like consistency. <laughs> Consistently late. Consistently late. Hopefully y'all uh, can get on here. Good morning. Good morning. Corbin, want to say hi? Look at that <laughs> great smile. Aww. Well, we're not on YouTube live today. Um, my computer decided to update right now. Right so. when he was hooking it up. But we will uh, load it on there for later. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Julie. It's, um, yeah, it's Saturday. We've got a fun day kind of planned. We're wrapping up a lot of stuff here in Minnesota. So it's kind of a busy day of uh, getting, getting stuff ready to go. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good. We're gonna go do some fun stuff today. A little, we have our father-son deal. Um, we've been doing this Lutzen father-son trip um, every winter, and it's been incredible. Unfortunately, this year we uh, decided to cancel it out in Lutzen and uh, just do like a day here with father-son. So it'll be fun this afternoon, hanging out with the boys, going sledding and watching a movie and stuff like that. So anyway, hey, Jeannie. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Hey, Ralia. Got to hang out with the Ralia's husband, Brian, this morning. Some other awesome guys. Super fun. Uh, good morning, Emily. Hang out online. Yeah, online. Yeah. <laughs> then doing these Zoom soap Bible studies. If you haven't done one or if you're thinking of doing a group, I just want to encourage you to, to keep moving forward and do it. Um, these small groups have been really impactful for me, so... I love getting the one-on-ones or the group of like three or four, or five guys together. And this was a new group today. Yep, new group this morning. Awesome time, and you know, hit him, hit him right away with uh, Luke. What are we at? 16? Sixteen. Sixteen, which was uh, where'd my Bible go? Hmm. I gotta get my stuff. But Irvin, do you want to find Dad's Bible? You can get my it's Bible. In I think my it's room. in the room. Anyway, Luke sixteen, which was a great one. Um, it spoke to me this morning. So Sarah did Genesis. Yeah. So she'll get to share on that. Fantastic story. Um, I'll pray real quick and then I'll share an update on testimonies and then we'll get into it. Yeah, we'll Sound get good? like a routine here. Yeah, we're just kind of a, kind of off of our structure a little bit today this morning. But eh, it's okay. Eh. <laughs> oh, so Father, we thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you are, you are always with us and all we have to do is just slow down enough, Lord, to, to seek you. And we seek you, 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 we find you. And uh, Lord, you always show yourself real whenever we just step in a little bit of faith. And uh, and you continue to show up and uh, you're always there. So Lord, we, we come before you this morning. We open up your word. Lord, speak to us and uh, just what, what we need for today. Speak to our hearts. Encourage us. Just continue to uh, give us the uh, confidence to step forward and uh, just the more. The greater things that you have for us, Lord. Um, so, Father, we just ask for your continued wisdom and guidance. We ask for your peace, Lord, to just rest on each one of us, that we may be able to just be a vessel to pour out more of your peace as we receive it and uh, give it to others, Lord. We also ask, Lord, just for uh, just your continued love and courage to uh, go out and uh, love one another as well. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning. I missed you. All right, you give your testimony, then I have a little testimony. Okay. And then we'll jump in. So testimony update, uh, if you followed a day ago, two days ago, two days ago, mm -hmm. um, I, I met a gentleman named Alberto at uh, a McDonald's. He was an employee there and um, went and talked to him, blessed him with $20 and just said, hey, I just want to bless you with 20 bucks. Okay, ask, pray for you. ask them how can I pray for you this is just kind of the habit I'm getting into daily and um, he shared that uh, he wanted me to pray for his family his wife and his two girls and uh, that they would have food and be provided for and um, anyway prayed for him prayed for blessing and that this would be a sign that the Lord sees him and hears his prayers well I shared that because when I I was in a hurry took off um, so I had a meeting and on the way there I just realized that ah oh, 
I should have given him given him more. I mean, I just it's like it I it dawned on me that he asked me for that he was in prayer for food. And I'm like And the significance of that. Just the significance of that, yeah. And so who knows what he's actually making at McDonald's, probably not. A right. Lot. And I could just I could sense in his spirit that he is a man that of integrity and he's doing what he can and uh to you know get money for his family. Yeah. Anyway, shared that and handful of you and I know many probably more would if I would even ask but I didn't even ask um, <laughs> reached out to me and said that they, you wanted to bless him and uh, so I just wanted to yesterday I went back there to try to figure out when he works next because I called I stopped by there the that same night he wasn't there but they said I don't, I don't think he works tomorrow which was yesterday but the the general manager will be in and you can ask um, her or when he'll be in next and so yeah. Anyway, went there yesterday after our soap and stopped in there and um, general manager was there. She ended up was the one that answered the, you drive up, you can't go into McDonald's, you just drive up. And I said, yeah, it's the general manager. And she goes, yep, you're talking to her. And I'm like, oh, hey, um, I'm just wondering uh, if Alberto's in or if uh, when he'll be in next. And she's like, oh, he's actually here right now. I go, well, I'd like to talk to him. Um, I just have a blessing. I want to bless him. And she's like, okay, so... She asked me, do you want to order anything? I said, sure, I'll have a burger. So it just was awkward. So then I, uh, I, I drove up there and uh, and Alberto comes to the, the window and then there's another person standing there. I don't know if it was the manager or not, but oh, yeah. if it was the manager, it just, they looked young, but that could be. Oh, I, I don't yeah. know. Um, anyway, um, I just said, hey, Alberto, do you remember me? I'm Josh. And uh, I was one of you met in the parking lot the other day and blessed you. And I said, uh, you know, me and my friends have been praying for you and your family. And uh, a handful of them chipped in and uh, we want to give you this. And I gave him a hundred dollar bill. And uh, he's like, really? Wow. Thank you. <laughs> he just is like, I think he just is like, you know, caught off guard, right? Somebody asked you to come to the window to talk to you and give him a hundred dollar bill. And just says, hey, we've been, we're praying for you and your family that the Lord will continue to provide. And that this is just a sign that he sees you and he's hearing your prayers. And uh, and I just said, and then I gave him my business card with my phone number and, and stuff. I said, hey, please, you know, give me a call if you need anything or if we can help or if you want more prayer, but um, just let me know. And he just said, thank you. Thank you so much. And and that was pretty much the interaction, you know, it just, it did get real emotional or anything like that, but it, it was pretty powerful, right? I mean, I just, I think it's a sign. And so I just wanted to encourage our group. Thank you for your hearts. And uh, just another opportunity to just go back and intentionally love somebody a second time. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. So awesome. No calls back yet, but <laughs> oh. it was it was it was good. I I don't know if I necessarily expect it, but what you know, yesterday we drove by that McDonald's. Me and my family I go every time I go by there, we're gonna say a prayer for Alberto and his family. Mm -hmm. So we, we drive by that by that McDonald's a lot. Yeah, the McDonald's on thirteen. It's uh, thirteen and. Uh, 35 kind of across from Menards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Menards area. Washburn. So if you know where that's Washburn. At. Okay. Washburn. 13 Washburn. So you guys can do the same. If you're there, who knows? Pray for him. Yeah. Everybody's going, look, asking for Alberto. Yeah. I'm starting to get nervous. Who's Alberto? <laughs> He's like, what are all these people? And why do they keep stopping and blessing me? I don't know. Who knows what the Lord will do? Pretty cool. Does everybody know me? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> all right. Sarah can share hers. Okay. So I had. Um, uh, we had a, I had a really good day yesterday. I was able to go to a friend's house and talk about essential oils, which is a passion of mine. And and she is um, waiting for her healing to happen. I won't give details because I didn't get that permission from her. But she is standing in agreement. I'm just going to declare that that she will be completely healed of a of a disease that she's been diagnosed with. I'm not accepting that diagnosis in her life, but um, you know, there's like a reality that comes. With that, that you're waking up each day not feeling great, you're having pain, whatever it may be. So sometimes you need somebody in your life to really stand in the gap and believe in the resources of heaven that they are fully provided for you in your own life. And as I was driving there, I just I was I was kind of brought to tears, realizing what my day was all holding. Like I was going to be meeting with her, we're gonna be talking about essential oils and about faith and healing, and and then the um Later on that night, we were, I knew we were going to be going over to a friend's house. Um, also, I won't mention names, but she has been miraculously healed of multiple sclerosis, MS. And so I was realizing this, like, and 
she was the one, I've talked about her before, where I did stand in the gap and I completely believe in that healing. And it is, it is a miracle. People don't miraculously normally get healed of MS. There isn't like a treatment that cures it. There's a, tr there's treatments. There's a lot of treatments that help you survive the symptoms and prolong your life or make your life more enjoyable, but it's not like you get cured of it. And so sort of like when I had narcolepsy, same thing, like there's drugs to help you live each day, but there's no cure. And so when you get cured of something like that, it's like, it has to be God. It is God's provision. And realizing too on my drive that we had been with a friend on Tuesday night that shared a miraculous healing story as well in her own life that she went in, had a, um, a procedure done and it showed no sign of disease, whereas before it did. Okay. And I'm like, wow, like, thank you, Lord, for these encouraging testimonies of your miraculous healing mm -hmm. over my friends so that I can bring faith to those that are not walking in their complete healing yet. Right. Like, it's right. just around the corner. It's coming. And so I was just, I was just kind of um, processing that and thanking the Lord for, for his goodness that it is, you know, for now, it is right now. And and one thing uh, my friend yesterday afternoon and I were talking about, she said, you know, a lot of my family believe that healings were, God gave healings in the, in the New Testament to build the church. Like that was the reason. I've actually never heard that. So I thought, oh, that's interesting that that was the purpose of it. And now, supposedly, the church is built so that we don't, we don't need his miracle working hand anymore. And I do not agree with that. <laughs> Sausage. Okay. <clears throat> Cooking breakfast. Um, I I believe that it is. I mean, completely still relevant, and that that the Lord's will and His desire is to completely heal. Heal. It's not for people to walk in disease, in sickness, in pain, in illness, in any form. Whether it's long term, whether it's a virus, whether it's stomach ache like it mm -hmm. it all can be healed and god wants to heal all of that so that's my fun from yesterday praise the lord more yeah. testimonies more yeah. encouragement yeah and you know speak up like share your testimony if you've been healed even even like what we consider small things you know like i remember my kids were little and they kind of have a fever and not feeling great we would pray over them and by that night they're completely fine it's like well this could have gone a different way but then you're just like oh maybe maybe they were just you know maybe it was just a fluke but it's like no 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 like let's give god credit for where credit is due and he he is the healer. He's just waiting for us to ask and accept and receive what he's given up to us. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, on to Luke. Praise the Lord. Yep. Um, More Genesis. Luke Genesis 16. 39 and Luke 16. Do you want to do Genesis? No, you go first. Okay. I'll go first. Luke 16. The, uh, the verse that speaks to me is, uh, is uh, 9 says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself <laughs> so that when it is gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. It, it's like, it just sounds like it's wrong, right? I'm just going to buy my friends. Yet, uh, We got talking about it last night. I'm like, it says that? <laughs> it, that's what that's it says. Odd. <laughs> and what, a couple things that uh, I, you know, when you read this, this uh, parable that the Lord talks about the shrewd manager yeah. is, uh, parable. is that, um, you know, he knows he's basically going to get fired. And so what does he do? He goes and like says, if I get fired, I need to have friends. And because I can't make it on my own. And it's just about like, it's a wake up call, right? That many of us think we, we, it's all about us and I can make it on my own, but he realizes that he can't. And so what he ends up doing is going to all of his masters, people that own his master money and just reduces their debts and just said, they're like, wow, what a generosity thing he did. He reduced my debts. And so they end up liking him. But as we talked on the soap with my, my friends this morning, it's like, uh, the big aha they said, which I thought was cool is that it reflected well on the master as well, that when he forgave the debts of those people that owed him, and, and bless them that way. He made good relationships with that person, but also it made good relationship with them on 
the manager or the owner, yeah. the father. The and company. so yeah. when you look at this whole thing, it's like, wow, then the master actually commended him for for doing this. Like basically like no, for he's losing money. Cheating him, yet he loved how he did that and that he was Well he had foresight. <laughs> yeah. And that he was just talking like, hey, you, you know, you're doing this and that's that's a smart thing to do. Um, so how it spoke to me is that, you know, it's, it's like the Lord blesses us with things, money, let's just say what he uses money. So use your worldly wealth to gain friends and it's really to bless others. So when the Lord is giving us things, it's like, it's not just for me to consume and it's all about me. It's so I can bless others and, and have influence, make friends and win favor and build relationships, you know, it's like they, they talk about it's, you know, an ax, right? You know, they, they shared everything and they worked yeah. together. And it's actually, it's, you know, just the way it's wrote in there, it, it sounds bad. So the passion, I don't always read the passion, but Sarah <laughs> yeah. reads it and I read this and we get to compare but Yeah, the so passion, I read it last night. I was like, listen to this. This helps make it a little more sense. The passion just puts a little bit better into it. It says, it is important that we use the wealth of the world to demonstrate your friendship with God by winning friends and blessing others. Then, when the world fails and falls apart, your generosity will provide you with an eternal reward. I was like, wow, that, that helps confirm the whole thing. And, and obviously, you know, like I said, we've been uh, doing this blessing a day and interacting and showing kindness and doing these things. And... It's, it's really helping me change my heart and starting to adjust and see the, just how awesome it is, how it's encouraging others and winning favor, right? Right away when you have instant favor, when you go and give somebody a $20 bill, they're like, hey, thank you. I, I like you. <laughs> You're a generous person. It's like being generous that way, it, it's a good thing. And it actually, it's helping me because, you know, you read more of this verse is that it talks about, you know, not loving money, mm -hmm. loving God and you can't have both loves. I can't have both. And what I find is, and I struggle with this daily, just confessing that I want to hold on to money. It feels like that's my security. And as I can... <laughs> when can, things get uncertain. Yes. So I'm just like, oh, I just want to hoard more of it. And it's going to make me feel safer. And More water, more toilet paper, more money. <laughs> yes. And I'm realizing that, you no, know, in this time, this verse is speaking to me that in this time, Josh, you go out and continue to share love with others, bless others, come from a different mindset. And like it says in the Passion Translation that they will experience the love of the Father through that, um, through that generosity. So yeah. super timely word for me and where I'm at. And I'm glad that it, it actually had to dig into it. So when I first read it, I'm like, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't sound right that I'm just supposed to use money to gain influence or gain friends. Yet, in doing so, it's really you're going out and you're loving people, you're blessing them, and it's not a bad thing. I think it's even, I think even sometimes I would just say this is me, but I think even in, to start it, it's kind of like fake it till you make it. Yeah. Just go and do it. And maybe your heart's not 100% right, but my heart is growing. It's like I'm actually looking forward to blessing somebody. I'm looking forward to giving. Now it's something you get to do, you don't have I, to do. Exactly. <laughs> my wife says it all the time. And so it just thought, so even if maybe you have a little bit of like, ah, I don't want to do this, just go do it. It's kind of the same thing with forgiveness. Sometimes I don't want to forgive somebody. I just know that I need to. And so uh, we were talking to like some people say, well, I just don't know about my financial thing, whatever it is. It's just like, well, look at, talk to it as a family and budget for it and go, what if this, this week we didn't go out to eat one less time or whatever it is. I know all people aren't going out to eat as much anymore, but. Or they're going to go to the drive thru Something like that. You know, if you could look at one thing and just say, like, if I didn't do that, um, we'd have an extra $40 and take that $40 and think of a way that you could sew it into something else. So just a something to, to adjust and just see how, what, that, what that outcome is um, and kind of go from there. But I highly recommend it. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting for us and our family. And every time I do it, I'm still nervous. Um, yet the Lord is always faithful. And... Uh, brings us the right person and fills our mouth when we talk to them and just show them love. So anyway, prayer is that, yeah, that we just continue to grow in this and uh, 
just continue to walk in this like the Lord has actually called us to, that we can realize that we are just like a conduit, right, for things to flow, you know, from whatever it is, the, the Lord to somebody else. And um, I, I feel like in my life, the more I come up with ways that I can bless people, it's just like the more blessing it just falls on my life that I can funnel through to others. And uh, I just declare more of that in my life and in yours. In Jesus' name, and amen. Really good, Raleigh, yeah. It's God's money. It's God's budget. Amen. That's what I declared. Sometimes we think of, a, like, I get in a poverty mindset, and I'm thinking, like, well, where can I cut enough money out so I can give some more? And it's like, yeah, that might be necessary, because I do have a lot of excess where I could do that. Um, I would also challenge us, though. It's like, I think just make the declaration, make the prayer that, Lord, as a family, we want to we wanna be able to give away $100 this month. $100. I'm like, well, how are we going to come up with that? Well, let's just make the declaration. Let's have a plan. When we do get it, we're going to do this. And then watch how the Lord, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get a check in the mail for something that you're like, oh, there's yeah, a rebate. Something random. Or I got this. Or you know what? I got a bonus at my job. Or whatever it is that you didn't expect falls into that. And just watch how that happens. It's just a testimony to how he provides when you make a declaration of what you want to do. Love that. So... Yep, his storehouses are never empty. Yeah. There's so abundantly, the doesn't run out. more than enough. Yep, and it's it's the same thing, you know, I, when you run into people like, well, somebody else needs this more than I do. That's a lie from the enemy. The Lord wants to bless you just the same as he wants to bless them, and he has enough for you and them. I love it. There's no, like, he's running out. God is, Yeah. He, he's not like, oh, I'm worried that I might just run out of resources. It's like, no, <laughs> it's, it's a lie. So, anyway. That's for us and you to receive that. Love it. Right. Well, I don't want to go much longer, but um, just read Genesis 39. Genesis 39. <laughs> it's really, really good. It's the story of Joseph. I mean, um, verse 2 is kind of sums it up. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Amen. So even in his, like, year, you know, his, his story is so inspiring, like, Everything doesn't go right. He gets thrown in jail a couple times. He gets sold into slavery by his brothers. Like, things aren't always going right. Yet, he succeeded in everything he did as mm. he served. Wow. So, it was really his heart posture is what that was speaking to me. I know, specifically, Garrett is over here somewhere. He, when when he was younger, he always loved the story of Joseph. He always was like, read me the story of Joseph. And it wasn't because of the rainbow coat. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we focus on that part. But it was really, I think he was identifying with Joseph's perseverance and his heart and how he served the Lord. Um, and this is, you know, this goes to the story of Potiphar's wife. Uh, taking advantage of him and his that he is a man of integrity mm -hmm. and I mean went running from the house It even says you know Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned when Joseph was there He didn't worry about a thing He so trusted him because that was the kind of man that Joseph was mm -hmm. um And at the end of the chapter, it also says the warden, this is when he's in jail, the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused him to, everything he did to succeed. So I just felt like that was just like the theme throughout it that everything wasn't perfect. And I'm just kind of looking at like, oh, what's going to happen in this world? Like there's a lot of things stirring and a lot of prophecies and hypothetical ideas. Um, and it's, it's like, well, what, what can remain solid? What is our solid rock? How do we remain firmly, firmly planted? And it is to have favor in the eyes of the Lord. And Amen. I feel like, how do we do that? We do that through love. We do that through being in his word. We get, do that through getting to know him very, very well. And how do we do that? We're in relationship with him. And that means communication, prayer, reading his word listening to the Holy Spirit, yeah. and just becoming so firmly grounded in, so whatever happens, I mean, we can't control any or everything, <laughs> and so how do we do what we can do, and that is to remain in Him. Right. He causes everything we do to succeed. Love it. That's awesome. That's what I got on that. 
Well, thank you. Let's pray. Um, it's a blessing. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for just the many, many blessings you've given each one of us, Lord. Uh, Father, may you are just continue to just always be faithful. And uh, Lord, may you just continue to pour out your mercy and your grace on us, Lord. You know that we struggle with these things that we talk about, each one of us. You know right where we're at. So Father, we just ask for you, so your continued grace on our life, Lord, that we can walk in the things that you've called us to walk in, and that, Lord, that we can just turn away, repent, and turn from the ways of thinking that are from the enemy. Yeah. That, Lord, that we want to come into the mindset of abundance, mm -hmm. and, Father, just remove the lie of poverty. May we continue to walk in that freedom, Lord, and uh, trust you with everything, Lord. May we trust you with our lives, with our finances, with our family. With everything around us, Lord, our businesses, and uh, Lord, may we just commit them to you and continue to serve like Joseph did, Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, that as we do that, Lord, that just things will continue to go well in our life. And uh, Lord, that we'll just continue to be that conduit between heaven's resources and the world's needs. And that, Lord, that we can yeah. just continue to funnel that down and give you the glory and you the praise, Lord. And Father, may we just continue to... Realize that and uh, continue to make plans around that, Lord. May we focus on the, uh, the blessings and uh, not get distracted by the enemy's lies and fear and all those things, Lord. May we hold on to things loosely. And uh, may we just continue to release heaven's resources everywhere we go. Praise you for who you are. Bless this Saturday. Bless this weekend. Bless each one here. We speak health and abundance and protection over each one here. Lord, may their families just continue to grow closer to each other and to you. And uh, Father, may we just continue to spread hope everywhere we go. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, hope. Okay. Well, well thanks for uh, joining us. Saturday. Yeah. We'll have to figure out tomorrow because I am going to be at church again at 8.15. Okay. Sunday's our tricky one for us, so uh, just be on the watch for what we post on when that'll be. All right. See you guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.